Well, good morning, everybody, and this is Pastor Harvey coming to you from Bethel Baptist Church, sitting right here in the sanctuary, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Holy Week devotional. It is Thursday, April the 14th by my count. I think that's right. Yes, Thursday, April the 14th. This is the Thursday before Easter Sunday and the Thursday after Palm Sunday. It is Thursday of Holy Week, which has a special designation. The name of Thursday in Holy Week is called Maundy Thursday, and that's spelled M-A-U-N-D-Y, Maundy Thursday. And the significance of today is multifold. It has several things and several items in the scripture that are often commemorated on this day, including the Passover, including the washing of the feet, including what we're going to discuss in our text this morning. Uh, the word Mondi actually comes from a designation having to do with the text I'm about to read you. And so this biblical passage in uh, the Greek gave Mondi Thursday its name. So I'm going to read to you today from John chapter 13, beginning in verse 31, going to about 35. John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I want to focus in particular on those last few verses about this new commandment. And I just want to give us a challenge according to this uh, scripture passage this morning. We often say that God is love, and we're right by saying that. We also, often also say that we as Christians are supposed to love one another, and we are right by saying that. We're right by saying that we are to love those around us. Our, our, our church's vision statement is loving our community to Christ. That's what defines us as a church. And so all of these things are true and good statements. And Jesus said in verse 34, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I wonder what we would call the most important, the most defining part of Jesus' commandment that he gives. Would it be that this is a new commandment? You know, Jesus certainly was the establisher of a new covenant. He certainly did a new work upon the cross. He certainly provided uh, a new sacrifice once and for all, as Hebrews says. But um, I would suggest that that's not the part I want to focus on this morning. Uh, would we say that the most important part is that we are to love one another? Well, to be honest, I know a lot of people who love one another, who otherwise may not be very godly in their approach. I know of people who don't believe in Jesus Christ at all, who love one another. And so what is it about Christians and what it is about us as believers that sets us apart? I mean, why couldn't this passage just be applied to the world at large? Hey, if you believe in God, love one another. Because later on he says, by this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus isn't saying that if you love somebody, then you are his disciple. Because I know plenty of people that do not follow him, are not disciples of him, and yet they love one another. They do loving things for people. So that's not, that's not the part I want to draw your attention to either. Here's the part I want to draw your attention to. Just as I have loved you. Just as I have loved you. I want to suggest to you today that that is the defining phrase in this new commandment. If you take that out, then we get to define the love we have for one another. Let's take it out just for a moment do an exercise. 
Lord, forgive me for taking a little bit out of your scripture here, but we're going to do it just to, just to show you what I mean. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Well, frankly, I think most of the world probably hits that qualification, right? I mean, we hold doors open for each other. We give each other gifts for birthdays and Christmases. Are these not acts of love? We might even donate to a charity after some tragedy has happened. We might have fondness of feeling for one another in fami familial relationships. Are those not acts of love? Of course they are. But now let's add the phrase back in. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you you also are to love one another. Now, though Jesus gave this commandment prior to the ultimate punishment he would face upon the cross, he was implying that it is that level of love that we are to love one another. And that changes the commandment entirely. It changes everything entirely about how we as believers perceive that we are to love one another because now it adds a new parameter to our love. And that parameter is sacrifice, sacrificial love. And that changes everything entirely. Now it's not just holding a door open for a person. It's holding the door open for the whole line of people, even if it means you have to go at the end, right? And that's a small example, I understand. Now it's not just you know, letting somebody go through before you in the drive through It's also paying for someone at the back. That's sacrifice. It's a small example, but you get the point. So when we as believers are challenged and, yes, commanded to love one another, Jesus gives us this parameter, this condition that defines our love. Just as I, that is Jesus, just as I have loved you. What is our challenge today? Our challenge today is not simply to love the world, but to love the world as Jesus loved us. Yesterday I said, you cannot outgive Jesus, but today I'm going to say, you cannot outlove Jesus. There is no act of sacrifice, no act of love that will ever measure up to what he did upon the cross for us. And yet, that is to define the spirit of our love for one another. Think about these things. Pray about these things. Ask yourself, is the way that I love my close family members, is the way that I love my schoolmates, my classmates, my workmates, is the way that I love my neighbors who live beside me on the street, is the way that I love the total strangers, would it remind people of the cross? And if not, is it the sacrificial way that Jesus has called us to love one another? These are convicting words from the scripture today. They're convicting to me and perhaps to you as well. Think about these things as we go through Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday together. Let's pray. Lord, help us, teach us what it means to love as you have loved us. Help us to apply this. Help us to show those expressions of love sacrificially in a way that would remind someone else the love you have for us and perhaps would even draw them closer to the cross of Christ. We can't do this by ourselves, Lord, but through your power, by your Holy Spirit helping us, we can love someone as you have loved us. Help us, we pray in your name. Amen. Once again, I thank you for joining me today. Tomorrow is Good Friday, a very poignant day, a very profound day, a very, yes, sad day, uh, but only in the context that we know it's coming after it. So I pray that you would once again join me for our devotional tomorrow, Good Friday. This coming Sunday, we have sunrise service at 6.30 and morning worship at 10. We would love for you to be our guest. If you have no place to worship, worship with us. We would love for you to be our guest. If you do come at 10 a.m., I suggest you come early. As we've been having some seating issues recently, praise the Lord, we've got a lot of people coming. But that means you need to come early enough to find a seat. So come on. We're going to get everybody seated one way or the other uh, as we seek to love one another. And I love you. I pray that you have a good day. God bless you. Bye.